All right, today we're going to be detailing a 2000 Ford Ranger truck today. Uh, as you can see, we've got all of our nice cloths, wash hand mitt, and then an array of our detail products, all from Superior Image. Thanks to them, we also have a plan. So I've got a list here, and you can see I've got some things written down. That is the steps to do all this. So why did I need steps? Okay, as a, let's see, an amateur, not a professional detailer, and I'm not doing this to get paid. Um, I wouldn't know. I could wash it. Well, I could wax it. Maybe I could rub a clay bar across it. I see people do that, but this is my 2000 Ranger. It was my dad's vehicle originally, and uh, I bought it off him. As you can see, it was a little dirty, but it's also, you see swirls, even where it's shiny, it's not as shiny as it could be. It's definitely been taken care of to be almost 20 years old. As you can see underneath, it's nice and clean under there. And that's partially due to me taking this truck a little bit apart, sandblasting the frame, recoating it. Uh, it was an Illinois truck, so everything was rusty underneath. And now it's a lot cleaner. This bumper needs to be redone. This Arizona is very harsh on um, paints, surfaces. You can see the front end's kind of chipped and nicked. So what we're gonna focus on is getting it clean and not worrying about the chips and nicks on the bumper. Uh, something we won't wax or seal today. What we'll do is just wash it, get it clean, get that surface prepped, and then later on we'll recoat it with some more of that color paint and then possibly clear bra it to protect it. I'm not sure yet, but um, you can see some marks here. These are where the bug shield goes or a rock shield, whatever you want to call it. It's what's protected this whole front end, but you can see it's also left dirt there, pretty heavy, and a couple spots where paint's been rubbed off. So we'll get all that cleaned up. We can't clean up the paint where it's been removed. So uh, like here, the chip, a couple little chips here. So eventually this truck's gonna have to be repainted or cleaned up really good if you really want it to look brand new. But uh, right now what we're trying to do is just restore it and make it look as new as possible. So I hope you guys will enjoy this video, maybe learn a little bit as I'm learning. I've never done a full detail like this, even though over there in that garage you can kind of see a monster sticking out. Uh, in the meantime, you know, we're not working on vinyl wrap and everything else. That's a different story. We're going to focus on this Ranger. Okay, so we're going to get to washing the truck, getting it cleaned up and ready to clay bar. And actually, we're not going to use clay bar. We're going to use a clay mitt. So no more dropping your clay bar and getting contaminants in it and having to throw it away and buy another one. Now we have this mitt here, which has the surface on it. And this is a medium grade. It's perfect for getting rid of all those contaminants and really cleaning the, ba the paint. We're gonna do it with some soap on there, so we've got some nice lubricant. So sit back, enjoy, and uh, let's get to it. Okay, so the first steps are gonna to be to wash the truck. We gotta get it wet, and then we're gonna wash it off. Now there are two soaps that I have from Superior Image. There's the Maxi Foam, and then there's the Mega Foam. This is ultra concentrated. This is mostly concentrated. A cap full of this in the bucket there, more than enough for this. It is a much smaller cap. That's really all you're gonna need. Not even that, about half a cap into a bucket of water. You can see it's a small bottle but a very small amount and the foam gun the foam gun I'm using maybe about a tablespoon of it not a whole lot again it's gonna just be so foamy because of how concentrated it is so you don't always need a lot to make the soap and everything you need so our first step is gonna be to wet it down and then we're gonna use this product called diamond bright so this product here is a degreaser 
This is going to remove all of the heavy grease and, and grime on the side, everything that's a little bit oil based. Um, and it's going to start our cleaning process. We've actually got a three step process to get this paint clean because paint is porous, even though it feels like it's solid. Microscopically, there are pores in it, and those pores are going to collect dirt, contaminants, oxidation, rust. You have brakes. Brakes are going to create du brake dust, and those are some metallic pads, so you actually have metal going into your paint and sitting in there. So our second process is going to be use a tire and wheel cleaner on the whole car. Now that what that does is it kind of turns purple a little bit as it activates with rust and metal and it's going to get all those contaminants out. So we're going to we're going to rinse, wash it with this, rinse again, wash it with the next product, rinse again and then we're going to get to the soap. So the sun is a little hot here in Phoenix. So I decided to put the camera here under the canopy of the tree. You can still see the truck, see all the work being done. You're only gonna see the one side, but you really don't need to see the whole thing and follow me around. I'm just a one-man crew, so until I've got a camera crew and all that uh, or anything like that, uh, you're just gonna have to deal with just me doing it all. So enjoy. Hey, for those of you wondering, you know, how am I going to get this product onto there? Am I going to have to keep refilling and emptying and washing out that bottle? No, see the, the hose here for the spray nozzle on the pressure washer is a rubber hose. So you're just going to stick it down in there and let it twist around in. Keep twisting until the lid is tight. We don't want it to gush out as it's doing this is a full bottle and there you go you actually have your pressure washer and your product feeding I use some heavy amounts. You see the bottle is just about empty. I do have some more. Now we want to get this stuff agitated.
Okay, so it took me about one bottle of this, and this is the um, the Wheelex. And you'll notice maybe over there you can see some streaks coming down on the truck. Those are actually purple streaks, and that's how this chemical works. It reacts with the metallic particles, and it turns them purple. So you'll see purple streaks all over the truck right now. And what we're going to do is let that work for a couple minutes, and then we're going to go ahead and rinse that off, and then we're going to get to the soap part. Okay, so I'm just going to take you around and show you a couple spots. So you can see right back here, my tailgate is all purple. Look at that. That's all just contaminants all over the place. Rolling out everywhere, the wheels. And you see it's starting to haze over and dry. That's okay. This stuff is not going to hurt the paint. You see my hood is just purple streaks everywhere. And down here too, it's already starting to dry and haze up a little bit. This stuff is, it's... It's an acid, but it's a neutral acid, so it's not going to hurt your paint. It's great for these wheels here. Um, these are actually clear-coated aluminum, so they're not just like, you know, bare aluminum, and that's how you can use this acid to clean them up. This stuff is meant for clear coats. It'll be good on paints. You know, you really need to remove all these metal contaminants. This is a great product to use, and again, that's the wheel X right there. So I'm going to get back to rinsing this thing off and then we'll get to the next step. Just want you to see Look how shiny those wheels already look. And the paint too. I mean, yeah, it's wet. But, I mean, look look how much shinier and cleaner that looks. I mean, it's still got a little bit of soap residue, and that's fine. Maybe, or maybe it's on my hand. But look at the wheels. Just, that's super shiny, and I didn't polish them. Or anything it's just that cleaning product alone that wheel x really did a great number on it and look already most of this has come up a little clay bar will clean it up but you remember that was kind of dingy and black and you couldn't rub your finger through it either so it just wasn't coming clean now while i had the wheel x on here i went ahead and scrubbed the mud flaps back here they are rubber um, i scrubbed the tires as well the soap started turning brown he's just taking the oils and the contaminants that are all in these wheels and getting them out and you can see they're already starting to dry and look a little cleaner we'll dress them up later on that'll be another step so let's get to the foam and the actual soap which you would think would be the first step Okay, so you know we've used the other product. We used the hand mitt and the scrub brush. So what we had to do was take the water and change it. The reason we change it, we don't want to mix chemicals in there. One chemical to the other. We're trying to just do it in stages, not keep remixing other chemicals on there. There's a little bit residue. It probably wouldn't hurt anything. But we're trying to do this in the proper steps and show you the proper process. So. We empty the bucket, put a little more mega foam in it, and we're back to wash it. So now we're gonna rinse this off, and then we're gonna get to the clay mitting. The reason we're doing all this is first we gotta remove all the contaminants, the loose stuff. 
and then we'll get and start pulling up all the really ground in stuff with the clay mitt. But in order to do that, we gotta really, you know, prep the surface to that point. So let's fix that. This is what, rinse number four? All right, we've got more of our maxi foam in here. As you can tell this stuff's got a little bit of a pink hue to it. And that is the maxi foam, not the mega foam. So it's gonna be a little pink, but who cares what color it is? It's gonna be a little less foamy, which is good. That's what we want in our bucket. We put a screen in here and that, what that does is it allows dirt to settle in the bottom and not keep agitating in the water and getting in the mitt and getting in the paint, which for a 20 year old truck is not really gonna matter. But this is the whole point of this thing is to not worry about how old the truck is or how new it is. The process is still the same. We're trying to get something to look nice and new again. Even if you just have a couple year old car and it's just looking a little dingy and grimy, this same process is gonna bring it right back. And the reason we're doing it on a 20 year old truck is to show you that process. So um, I've changed the water out in the bucket there. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but we'll angle you down there. You can see the bucket in front of the truck. That has brand new water and soap in it. And what I've done is I'm using the Superior Image Maxi Foam Soap. So that right there is going in there. This is concentrated, so you don't need a whole lot. Just a little cap full was more than enough to make super suds in there. That one down there. And for my foam gun, this tiny little cap, I barely put about a half a cap full into this full bottle here I think it's a it says a thousand on one side I'm not sure how much it is I think it's 32 ounces of water so um, just a tiny little cap of this mega foam here is super super concentrated it's you only need this little bottle this is a sample bottle by the way uh, I don't know if I'm gonna need another one but I'm sure I will eventually I do like the foam I love the foam so uh, I'll probably be using a lot of it I do go through a whole bottle just in one washing there um, not one whole washing one pass one full pass on the vehicle and this bottle is just about empty so I'm definitely gonna need more later on I know where I'm going to Superior Image. So. All right, we're foam gun ready. We have our clay mitt right here. We're gonna go ahead and start soaking that in the water. Oh yeah, you can feel that clay on there. Yeah, that's Woo! sticking. There we go. there soaking let's get our foam gun going and I'll move you guys right back okay so the last step finally got all the clay bar done foamed each panel ran the clay bar across it and it's actually a clay mitt got all the contaminants loose rinsed it finally now we can foam gun the truck and wash it and rinse it and then we're ready to dry it and get to the ceiling. So I'm not gonna like constantly keep this film on and the simple reason is I'm killing my batteries faster than I can get this truck done. Then you know I only have a few hours of filming so we're gonna go ahead and turn it off. I'm gonna foam it, wash it, and then we'll come back. Okay, time to dry with our microfiber towel. Now, people use chamois, and I mean, that's okay. It's not really preferred. Chamois can, can, can uh, retain particles and dirt that you can't get clean. These, really nice, soft, light. This will dry about half the truck before I even have to wring it out. And then, when I'm done, I can take this, and this is how I wash all my towels. You can wash them differently, but I take my towels into the kitchen sink after I've cleaned the kitchen sink, fill the water, put a little laundry soap in there and I hand rinse them. Just kind of wring them through and rub them together and then I rinse them and I let them hang and dry. Air dry all the time. Don't, 
These are a kind of a plastic fiber material. So when you dry them in the dryer, it's going to harden up these plastic materials, melt them a little bit, and then make them hard. So the best way is to just air dry them. And then when you're done, fold it up, put it away, and you're ready for the next shot. So let's get to drying. Yeah, just want to take you around and show you. This hasn't been waxed or sealed yet. It's just been washed and decamp, decamp, decontaminated. <laughs> Guess that's a hard work. Oh, looks like I got a little scratch right there too. All right. Well, anyway, you can see, especially up here, you can see. This is where there was little decals to keep the mounts for the you know bug shield from uh, vibrating and chafing the paint as you can see it unsuccessfully did it there and this is just glue residue but this whole area was like kind of a brown and I just could not get it clean even just wiping my hand on it dig my fingernail in it there's another rock chip but this thing you can see some swirls in it and if I really want to get rid of the swirls you have to pay a detailer a couple hundred bucks and have them take it out through a paint correction. Okay, so this is not a paint correction. This is just a paint restore. Um, we're just trying to get this shine back and get all the contaminants out. So that way as we're washing it again and again, we're not digging those deeper and deeper into the paint and just completely ruining it worse than it already is. You know, I don't think you're gonna find a 20 year old truck in Arizona that has this kind of shine. My batteries are dying. So um, we're gonna use this. It's called Very Cherry. It's a carnauba, carnauba wax and polymer. So it does have some, th some synthetic properties to it as well. This is gonna gr give it a great shine. It's gonna seal up all these little chips and stuff so that they don't start rusting. Um, it's gonna be a great product. And you can see I got this little bottle for this big truck. Uh, and this is the way I was told is stay thin to win. So um, you don't want to cake this stuff on really thick. And uh, what I'll do is I'm going to turn the phone, the camera off here. I'll come right back and we'll just show you a quick application of it on one area. Just so you see how thin you're going to apply this. And then um, we'll go from there. Just going to apply it in little circles. Spread it out. And then a little bit more on there. See, I've just got a little tiny glob on there, right? But once I spread it out, it's not it's not a whole lot. So again, just gonna quickly do this before this battery dies because I'm running out of batteries. Okay. Sure overlap. There's no spots that didn't get some of this wax. I'm just doing the hood. Just so I can show you guys full detail of it. We're all hazed over. Got our microfiber towel. Superior Image has a really high quality one here. And you see on all the corners and edges, no tag. And it's seamless. This is perfect. It's like probably the, one of the better towels you can get out there for buffing out. So I'm just gonna give this proper buff and shine that it needs. Again, I'm still gonna see swirl marks. I'm not doing a paint correction. I'm just doing a restore. I've said that a few times, I know. But I just want to remind you that we're not looking to completely make this look brand new showroom floor clean. You're not going to get that with this. You're going to have to do a complete paint correction. So we're still going to see swirls. But what we want is that nice showroom shine we are getting here. 
Now, maybe some of you are asking, hey, why didn't you use a buffer to get this compound on here or to remove the compound? Um, the reason is, one, I don't have one. The one I have is a cheap Harbor Freight one, and it doesn't really fit all the pads and stuff that you really need to be using for this kind of job. And if I was going to do a paint correction, I would probably get an orbital, like a multi-movement, you know, high-end buffer and use that material to paint correct and everything. But this is a very old truck. There's paint chipping back here off of the hood. There's a lot of scratches and some little rust spots that need to be sanded and cleaned up. So I think a nice respray would be in order for that. But for the meantime, we're just going to clean it up, buff it out, make it look shiny and clean and new as we can within our limitations. And this is what a home consumer would do, you know, if they had the day, wanted to really detail their vehicle and make it look clean and shiny as possible without spending hundreds of dollars on a detailer and you know some of us have that sense of pride when we've accomplished something and that's what I feel like when I've done this is that I've accomplished something I've made this truck look a lot newer than it was I'm protecting it from the elements so that way it'll last longer. Okay, so when I had the camera off, I went ahead and went around the old truck here and waxed it. So that's why I'm buffing off the fenders too. I'm so glad this battery is holding out. But look at that shine. I don't know if you can tell. There we go. It's a little spot I missed. As you can see back here, it's still a little hazy. So I've gone over the whole truck with the wax. But maybe we'll come back here and we'll just do the back of the truck really quick. Well, I've got battery. Still can't get over how shiny those wheels look. 20 year old wheels. I know, you're thinking, isn't it time for an update? Maybe some a refresh? Something new? You don't mind this. This is my old Instagram. It no longer exists get the rest of that later. Let's focus on the task at hand. I get, uh, sometimes you get easily distracted. So, let's keep focusing. So smooth. All right, so I just want to do a quick recap here. And we're going to start here. Uh, this was our first product we used was the Diamond Bright. This is the good degreaser. And then we went right to the Wheel X and we did a full body treatment. Now this is not something you want to use every time you're washing your car. Um, it will dry out your skin. So uh, you're going to need to moisturize your skin when you're done. It's pulling out a lot of material, a lot of grease and contaminants. And it's also pulling it from your hands as you're washing it. Um, if you have sensitive skin, I would recommend using rubber gloves just to make sure that you're not exposing your skin to it. But um, again, this is something you would spray on your wheels normally when you're just normally washing your car. Just give it a quick spray, let it sit for a couple minutes, and then just rinse it off. You don't need to even agitate or scrub it. You can if you have some really stubborn stuff, but for the most part, you're just going to spray it on and then rinse it off and not really touch it. 
Uh, our megaphone, that's what we actually used in the, gu in the gun itself. And the maxi foam, which I used in the bucket. You can use the maxi foam in the soap gun and the gun. You'll use a little more soap. Uh, you can see it's a bigger bottle, so it's not really a big deal. But you know, uh, it's a preference thing, and I just wanted to demonstrate as many products as I could with this using that uh, mitt back there. And then when we went to the waxing, I used that applicator there. And for the wax there, we used the very cherry sealant. That is carnauba in the polymer. We use that applicator right there to then spread it. You can see there's still a little bit of wax residue in it. Um, the one thing I didn't show you guys afterwards is I did dress the tires with Ultra Shine here. And I used a different applicator, a black one here. Like obviously you're doing tires and uh, if you use like a white or a red one, it's gonna get black streaks in it eventually. So why not just use a black one? And um, that stuff you actually put on the applicator and then spread onto the tire. Let it set for a little while and then if you want to you can buff a little bit of the surface off or you can leave it. But if you let it set and cure, it won't splatter. So uh, give your wheels that nice shine and I'll show you a couple pictures right after I end this video at the end here. Um, and just something I wanted to show you guys, this is something you can use when you get done washing your car if you want to do a quick wax detail on it this show shine is a nice spray detail and um, it's good for quick touch-ups and stuff like that so when you don't have the time to do a full wax like this here just throw that stuff on you can use it just for touch-ups or you can just uh, spray it on a rag and wipe it on the car and then buff it off really quickly so it's just easier when you're traveling or whatever or going to a car show and you want to show your car just quick spray that on and you're done and of course featuring the towels that I got there at Superior Image there's the blue one with the seamless and here is my drying towel the yellow one over here so some great products I would highly recommend using them over and over and over again as I will be doing and um, Big thank you to Superior Image for their guidance. They know their stuff and they were able to tell me exactly what I needed to do and when I needed to do it so that I could get this job done right. Um, again, it's you know it's in a 20 old truck, so I wanted to make sure it looked as nice as possible and stayed in as good a shape as it can. And the way to do it was to clean it up properly and detail it. All right, everybody, that is it. I just wanted to show you the products that we use, kind of a little recap, uh, let you know that Superior Image has offered a 15% off discount code. So look down in the description, you'll find that. That should help you save a little money and get you all of those sick products that you need. So thanks for joining me and uh, coming along on this journey with me of learning and work and sunburning, as you noticed. Uh, I turned redder and redder as the day went through, but uh, definitely worth it. So until next time, have a great day and aces.